there, I'm Jill Wellington, and I'm going to show you how to move a person into a new background. And this is, works especially well with my Atta Baby collection. I'm now selling these backgrounds individually on Etsy, and I'll provide the link below if you want to go and look for some of these. And I'm also selling them as a collection on my blog, which I'll also post the link to that below. But I want to show you how to do this so you can actually enjoy these backgrounds. And first of all, when you look at these backgrounds, you're going to want to look at how the lighting is in the background you're going to use. Like you can see this is out in the sunshine and there's sun shining right on the edge of this basket. So it's nice and a bright atmosphere. So that's how you want to shoot the baby or the child. In other words, don't take a picture inside your house and expect to bring that out here because it's just not going to match. The best way that I find for these outdoor backgrounds is to photograph like this. This is a little girl that I photographed right at the edge of my garage. I just got a piece of white poster board and stood it behind her and laid down a white blanket. And this gives me a beautiful clean edge and it makes it very easy to extract the baby out of this picture and put it into my background. So if you're thinking of taking a picture for one of the backgrounds, this is probably the best way to do it. But you can also do it if you have like anything else in the background. Just keep it as clean as possible, making it much easier on you. Let's go ahead and extract this little girl and for, get it ready to put into the basket. First of all, we use this tool. This is our quick selection tool. If you don't see this up here, right click and then you'll see it in, in this drop down menu, but you want the quick selection tool. And you're gonna wanna make sure Go up here to the top and make sure that this is on the plus brush. There's also a minus brush, which I'll explain later. But using your right bracket key, you can make this larger. A left bracket if you need to make yours smaller. And now I'm just going to click with my right a mouse key while holding down. I'm just going to kind of pull this down and you can see that it's very intuitive and it's grabbing the edges. It's kind of looking for the same shades of color and just kind of pull this down. I'm only going to use about half of her so I don't have to go all the way down. But let's say oops, you made a little mistake right there. This is where you're going to go up and use your minus brush. Click on that. And now the minus brush is used for anything that's on the outside of these marching ants. So if we have a problem like this, we can just go in on the outside with our negative brush and push this back in. So you can once again have your clean edge. I'm going to go up because this has a lot of little flowers. You can see I can kind of clean this up with my negative brush from the outside of the ants getting these edges that weren't caught. Kind of go in here and grab that. And this one didn't get all the way all the way in, so let's go back to our plus brush. Now we're working from the inside of the marching ants. So we can push that up to find that that little detail right there with it which is the same color. Now that looks like a really beautiful clean edge. Oops, I see a little bit on the shoulder. Let's go back to the negative brush. We're on the outside. It's good to go around your whole image and really take the time and make sure that you clean up these edges. But next, let's push the Refine Edge tool. And you can see this is an absolutely beautiful extraction because this Refine Edge tool is a really powerful, intuitive tool within Photoshop. We're, we're so lucky to have it. And you can, if you don't have a clean edge like this, you can use the Smart Radius tool. And go in here and play with that. See if that helps your, your edge to look better. You can play with any of these, the shift edge. Watch when I shift the edge here. Actually, mine's so clean. This just did a beautiful job because I had the white background. So mine's already ready to go. But after you've played around with this and think you have the nicest edge you can get, let's go ahead and click OK. And we can see that it has now extracted the background and we're ready to move the little girl into the back basket. So let's go ahead up here in the palette using your left mouse key, click, and while holding down, we're gonna drag it out of the palette like that. And we're gonna, here's our basket. Let's go to the move tool and we're gonna click on this little girl with our left mouse, while holding down, we're just gonna drag her right into this picture. 
And right now, go ahead and click out of this because we aren't don't need it anymore. We're on our move tool, so we can go ahead and resize her. To keep her in the proper perspective, you need to hold down the shift key while you're w working with the resize. So I grab the corner of that, and we can move her around any way we want. And we're really just trying to look to see if she was really in this basket, where would she be in this basket? And that's about how I think she would be. So once you get that, go ahead and click Apply. Now we're going to want to remove this part of the little girl so it looks like she's actually in the basket. And to do that, we're going to first of all go up here to our opacity and we're going to lower this down a bit. This way we can see through her and see where we're working. Now we're going to want to click on this mask right here and make sure that we have the black mask on here and click on your brush and go in here and now you can see that I'm actually erasing this part of the little girl so she's going to start to look like she's in the basket. Now when you get up closer here you're going to want to be careful with the details. Go right along the edge as carefully as you can and that's that looks pretty good right there. And then you just go back over here to the opacity slider and bring it all the way up and now she looks like she's in the basket. Well, let's say you made a mistake and oops, you did that. Well, that's very easy because this is a layer mask. You can just go back and grab your white brush and you can go in and get that back again. So this is a way you can really clean up and do some really good detail work going back and forth with a layer mask. See, I, I, I actually went to the basket just go back to your black and you can paint that back in. So by going back and forth with your layer mask, you can get a really nice edge there. Now that looks good, but there's a little bit of a tonal difference between her and this background. And that usually happens in just about all the pictures. So I'm going to show you how to get the same tone on the little girl. First, we're going to click on the background and then we're going to go and up to filter go to blur and go to average and what it did was it, it picked the average tone of our background so I'm gonna go up right here and grab my eyedropper just click on that now you can see my little eyedropper here click on that and now you can see that this color is down here and that's where you want it to be so now go ahead and click alt control Z to get rid of that off of your background and now we're going to go down and get a new layer. We're going to put this, click on this new layer, and you can see it right here above your, your pictures in your layer palette. Go over and grab your paint can, click on this, and just dump a whole can of paint right in, in, the, in that picture. You can see that this is now covering everything that's in our layer palette. We only want it to cover the little girl. So we're going to create a clipping mask. Don't don't worry, this sounds confusing. It's not. You're just going to click the Alt on your keyboard, Alt, and while holding it down, did you see when I clicked, see when I click Alt, this arrow appears. It's going down. It's It's when you're kind of right between these two layers. Let's click on that. And what you did was you made a clipping mask, meaning that whatever is in this layer only affects this layer. So see, the only thing that's affecting is this little girl. Now let's go with this opacity slider. Go all the way down to zero. That's how it normally was when you started. Now we just go up very slowly and you're going to see that tone being introduced. And that's when you can kind of see, oh yeah, that looks a lot better than this. It's starting to match the background better. So stop it wherever you think it looks like that. And I always do this extraction before I add any kind of actions or do any kind of editing work. That way the whole picture will have the same action and editing work applied to it. So that's how you add a baby to the basket. And you can do this with all kinds of other backgrounds and people and children and make some wonderful composites. Enjoy this. Thank you.